Welcome to this week's Planet Shakers podcast. We would love to invite you to any of our four Sunday church services right here in Melbourne, Australia. Service times are 9.30 a.m., 11.30 a.m., 3.30 p.m. and 6 p.m. Otherwise, you can join us online on YouTube or Facebook. We'd love for you to join us. Now to this week's podcast. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12 says says, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on, everyone say press on, to possess that perfection of which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Everyone say focus. You know, what happens uh, in, in social media or whatever in, in the world, there's so many things that try to attack or get your focus, get your focus. Um, <laughs> the other day, I looked at this thing on cats. I don't know why, it came up on my, I don't like cats. If you love cats, God bless you. But um, anyway, cats, so I looked it up. And then for the next day, I kept getting every second thing that would come on my Instagram, or not on my TikTok, was on cats. So as soon as you look up something, it just triggers this whole cascade of stuff. And sometimes in life, you can look at something and then your thoughts cascade into a place that's not healthy for you. That's why you gotta keep focus, everyone say focus. Focus on the one thing, forgetting the past, And looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Today I want to speak to you on the topic, pressing on, or in brackets, perseverance, power and peace. Perseverance, power and peace. You know, Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent and women with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is filled of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination alone are omnipotent or powerful when God is a part of it, the slogan press on has solved and always solved the problems of the human race. If we keep looking back, we will constantly look in the problems of the past and also the victories of the past. You know, uh, it, it says press on, forgetting what is behind. But there's another Scripture that says forget not. It says forget not all His benefits. He heals all our disease. You see, why does it say that? Because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. So what He's saying is forget not that what I've done in the past, I'll do in the future. But you can't live in the past, you've got to live in the future. So we've got to live in this place of always pressing on to the prize, never giving up, being persistent. The value of courage and persistence and perseverance has been really uh, illustrated more convincingly in the life of this man, of this man. At the age of 22, he failed in business. At the age of 23, he ran for government and he was defeated. At the age of 24, he failed in business. At the age of 25, he was elected to government. At the age of 26, his sweetheart died. At the age of 27, he had a nervous breakdown. At the age of 29, he was defeated for the Speaker of, of the House. At the age of 31, he was defeated for an, uh, defeated for an elector. At the age of 31, he, 34, he was defeated for Congress. At the age of 37, he was elected to Congress. In the age of 39, he was defeated for Congress. In the age of 46, he was defeated for Senate. At the age of 47, he was defeated for Vice President. And the age of 49, he was defeated for Senate. And the age of 51, he was elected President of the United States. And that is the record of Abraham Lincoln. If Abraham Lincoln had kept looking back, even in when he was in Parliament, and then he lost what, he would never have become the President, the icon, the person who people celebrate in what he achieved with his life. Perseverance is a powerful thing. Yeah. Duke University, 
did a study, because you know, I've discovered this. If I have perseverance, I'm gonna live in this mindset that I'm not gonna let anything take my peace, but I'm gonna constantly live in this position of peace. I'm gonna keep pushing through and pushing in, but I'm not gonna let anything steal my peace. If I keep God as my goal, my peace stays there. If I keep other things as my goal, I lose my peace. And so Duke University did a study on peace of mind now, and they found factors that contribute greatly to emotional and mental stability. Who would like to know them? So the first one is the absence of suspicion and resentment or nursing a grudge was a major factor in unhappiness. If you and I live a life that we're constantly suspicious, resentful, uh, having a grudge, we know we don't live in this place of pursuing the prize and we don't live in peace. Uh, we heard a great sermon on peace last week. But the absence from of peace is is filled with suspicion, resentment and, and, and unforgiveness. So that's why the Bible says forgetting what is behind and pushing forward, pursuing, chasing after, being persistent. I've discovered perseverance and persistence to chase after what God has given you is what you receive. So they, they learned this. This is, this is not a Christian study, but they've, they're actually uh, seeing what the Bible says. They're, they're actually helping uh, prove that the Bible is real. Second thing, not living in the past. An unwholesome preoccupation with old mistakes and failures leads to depression. So this isn't about other people. This is about yourself, forgiving yourself, letting things that you did in the past not define your future, they're a part of your past, you deal with your past, but you step into your future. If you're constantly living in regret, if you're constantly living in the mistakes of yesterday, you won't step into the future of tomorrow. Forgetting this one thing, I press on, I press in, I persevere, I get the power of God and I live in His peace. Forgetting what is behind. Now, you can learn from yesterday, but you can't live in yesterday. Hmm. The third thing they found is not wasting time and energy fighting conditions you cannot change. In other words, have power through your life. Don't, don't just fight in life or fight your life. Just say, no, I'm gonna live in victory in my life. And no matter what, my, my mess will be my message. My, my setback will be my setup. I'm not going to let life dictate me. Although I'm going to go with the ebbs and flows of life, I'm going to be victorious in every season in life. Even when I go through the valley, I'll be victorious. Even in the mountain, I'll be victorious. See, you can't change your valleys sometimes. Valleys come. Challenges come. You can't change them. You've done your mistakes. You can't change your mistakes. You can repent, say sorry, but you've got to live in your future. You cannot just let life control your moods and your emotions. Right now, we're getting bombarded with information on every side. And if you get so consumed with all this information, it will control the way you live. So you and I got to choose. I'm going to focus on Jesus. I'm going to focus on His love. I'm going to focus on His peace. I'm going to, I, I, I can pray. I can petition God. I can come into agreement with what God says. I'm going to pray for peace. I'm going to pray. But I can't control something that's not happening in my space. So I got to keep pressing in to God. Let's keep going. Are we getting anything out of this? They say that what keeps you peaceful, keeps you in a place of happiness is you've got to force yourself to stay involved in the living world, resist the temptation to withdraw and become reclusive during periods of emotional stress. So we've got to, got to persevere when our feelings are dictating our thinking. We gotta say, no, 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 I'm gonna change the CD. 
Instead of the, the worry CD, I'm going to put the praise CD on. By the way, we did this uh, thing called Chill at Christmas um, and there's all these songs that just chill. You can chill and you can sit by the fire, although we don't have fires here in Australia. You can sit by the pool and just chill. And you know, you, if you go to a massage over Christmas, say it to the person that, who's giving you a massage, put this on and you can chill. Heart, the head, oh, and I'll oh, sing. And now sir. You chill. <laughs> There's Pablo. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you got to live in this space that we say, hey, I'm going to be a person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to myself that I am going to stay involved. I'm going to be a person that is going to resist the temptation to withdraw. And I'm not going to live a life that pulls back, but I'm going to live a life that pushes through. <laughs> the fifth thing they they said, is if you refuse to indulge in self-pity when life hands you a raw deal, accept the fact that nobody gets through life without sorrow and misfortune. So we, we understand because we have a fallen world that people go through challenges and trials and, and tribulations and you can get in that feeling sorry for myself, life isn't fair. Or you can say, no, 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 I'm gonna live in this place of perseverance. I'm gonna live in this place of power and I'm gonna live in this place of peace because I'm pressing in to the prize. I'm not gonna let things press into me. I'm gonna press into God. And if you do that, they say, the studies have said, they're just proving the Bible again, that you will live a life of happiness. The sixth thing they say is cultivate old fashioned values like love, humour, compassion, loyalty. See, live in this place of, of just, the, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, forgiveness, um, you know, freedom and joy, the, the, act, the moving of the Spirit. Be, be people who live in this space because if we live in this space, we don't let anything come and live in our space. So I'm gonna be a person who lives with love. I'm gonna be a person who lives with forgiveness. I'm gonna be a person who lives with hunger for God. I'm gonna be a person who's generous. I'm gonna be a person who's compassionate. I'm gonna be a person who's strong. I'm gonna be a person who believes what the Bible says. I'm gonna be a person that lives according to the things of God. Sometimes they say if you have too much expectation of yourself, self-expectation and your ability to meet your goals and you don't see those goals come to pass, you might have feelings of in, uh, inadequacy, inadequacy. My mouth went funny then, inadequacy. You see, I, I've discovered this. Acts 1-8, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So it's not me who does the work, it's Him. I just cooperate with Him. So when we set goals and we set vision and we set all that, what we're doing is saying, God, we're just going to position ourselves with Your ability, Your power, Your joy, Your, your anointing, Your, your uh, you know, the word power means ability, efficiency and might. So God, as I position myself with You, I'm going to live in this place of overwhelming victory. I'm going to make you the focus. I'm going to make your empowerment the focus. It's not me that lives, but it's you who lives in me. So many times, I got to achieve this and I got to achieve that and I got to achieve that. You haven't started a diet in New Year's and you start really well for about three days. And then all of a sudden, you start eating and then all of a sudden, those. Salt and vinegar chips taste amazing and you hide them in the back of your car. But you have kids that dob on you. Oh, we saw the salt and vinegar chips in the car. Oh, well, good on you. I saw you at McDonald's. There's only 200 calories in salt and vinegar chips. In McDonald's, 3,000. What happens is then you can go, oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, I can't do anything. And you get in this place and you start looking down on yourself because you can't achieve or you're failing to achieve what you want to achieve. 
And that is an unhealthy place. Like Noah has great goals to beat me in sport, but he will never do that. Because he wants more house deposits and he wants other things. And so he's just got to submit to the will of the Lord that his father-in-law is way more talented. <laughs> but the, the truth is, if I expect things of God, you know, sometimes you go, God, I was believing for that and it didn't come about. That's why you've got to keep pressing in. You see, we've got to make sure we don't let time be the dictator of what we achieve. We've got to make truth be the dictator of what we achieve. So it's by truth. Abraham could have let time overwhelm him. And for a moment he did. But he actually had to keep intimate with the promise of truth that God would give him a son. Because I've seen so many people give up and they say, well, I prayed and God didn't do this. And, and they get disappointed and they get, and you know, there's nothing wrong with get disappointed for a moment, but don't live in disappointment. Get rid of the dis out of your life and become appointed. <laughs> One of the biggest things they found is they said, find something bigger than yourself to believe in. Self-centred, egotistical people score lowest in the test of any measuring of happiness. That's why we don't live for ourselves. We live for God. He, he is the reason we live. He is the reason we exist. We, we're human. We go through challenges. We go through trials. We go through temptations. We might not always get it right, but we got to constantly live in this place that say, God, I'm living for Your purpose. So if Your purpose is big, then I've got to live in a big mindset. I, 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 you're going to live according to what You say. I'm going to live for something bigger than myself. That's why if I live for God, I live for the things God endorses. He endorses forgiveness. He endorses letting go of the past. He, endor he says, if you don't forgive when you pray, I won't be here able to do anything. Why? Because he understands that faith is what moves the heart of God. And so I got to live in this place that God, I believe you. God, I'm going to live for you. God, I'm going to follow you. God, I'm going to, it doesn't matter what the economy says. Doesn't matter what people will say. Doesn't matter what the government does. Doesn't matter what social media says. I'm I'm not going to shrink my life to my environment. I'm not going to shrink my life to my challenges. I'm not going to shrink my life to my feelings, but I'm going to expand my life to living for You. I'm going to expand my view by looking at You. I'm going to expand my heart. I can't live in the shrinkage of the opinions of people. God never cancelled anybody. He always called them. The world cancels, shrinks you. God calls you, appoints you. <laughs> I gotta live for something greater. I gotta live in this place. We gotta live in this place that says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. This is what the devil says, yeah, but you did this wrong and you're not good at that and you, you mess up here. Oh, it's no longer I that lived. You're talking about what I did. I, I'm not living in what I did. I'm living in what He did. I am the righteousness of Christ. I am holy. I am powerful. I am anointed. Why? Because I live in this greater cause and you said you give me power to achieve what you've called me to achieve. <laughs> living for something greater. I keep pressing on. I love what the Message Bible says. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way, all these veterans cheering us on, it means that we're, we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running, never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus who both began and finished the race we're in. Study how He did it because He never lost sight of where He was headed. That exhilarating finish in the in, uh, 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 that exhilarating finishing in with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, 
the shame, whatever. And now He's there in the place of honour right alongside God Himself. When you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over the story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility He ploughed through, that we would be shoot, we would be shoot, uh, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. When you live for Him, something happens in you. There was a guy back in the day, he never got to see the final achievement of what he wanted to see on earth, but he saw it when he got to heaven. A guy called William Wilberforce, who was uh, the key component to the uh, abolishment of slavery in England. And he was discouraged one night in the early 1900s after another defeat in his 10 year battle against the slave trade in England. Tired and frustrated, he opened his Bible and he began to leaf through it. And a small piece of paper fell out and fluttered to the floor. It was written by the revivalists and the church builder at the time, John Wesley, shortly before his death. Wilberforce read it again and it, and it said, Unless the divine power has raised you up, I see not how you can go through your glorious enterprise in imposing this abominable practice of slavery, which is the scandal of religion of England and of human nature. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you'll be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? All of them can, them together, are all of them together stronger than God? Oh, be not weary of well doing. Go on in the name of God and in the power of His might. I'm here to challenge you. You might be going through things that try to enslave you, things that try to pull you back, the things that try to slow you down, things that try to get in your thinking. And my Bible says, if God be for you, for you, who can be against you? My Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Press on, press in, uh, persevere with the power of God and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Oh, understand. We heard last week on peace. God wants to bring you perfect peace. But He gives you the key to it. Keep your mind stayed on Him. I think about Him. I sing about Him. I talk about Him. I dream with Him. Because <laughs> He loves, I love this about our God. He loves turning our mourning into dancing. I love how He turns our sorrow into joy. Oh, I've been through challenges we all have over our lives. And you can get consumed with the temporal instead of the eternal. But this one thing I know, forgetting what is behind. Someone just shot me. And moving forward. Pressing in to the prize, the prize. They say that William Wilberforce died a, a month before they passed the legislation to change what he'd fought for his whole life. You go, well, he didn't get to see it. Yes, he did. He's in heaven. He got to see it. <laughs> this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, so today, if there's anything that's pulling you back to the past, one of the, remember at the, at the beginning of this year that God gave me this word, overwhelming victory, you're a victory. And He gave me this picture of the things of the past that try to pull you back, that try to attach yourself, themselves to you. And it wasn't just a year of breakthrough, a breakthrough from my past. No, I, I have overwhelming victory. My past goes nowhere near me. I'm so far away from it. I've got so much momentum, it can never catch me again. And at this Christmas time, what happens is for some, it's a really good time because you know, there's family get together, but for others, there's been divorce, there's been loss, there's been family members that are no longer here. They're, and you can come and you can get caught up with what was instead of a dream for what can be. 
this one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and pressing on. Pressing on. So today, this is what I want us to do all over our campuses. If this is anything in the past that is speaking to us right now, or anything in our present that is trying to hold us back right now, I want you to, by faith, shut the door and lock it and say, no, 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 you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. Lock it, shut the door, say no, no. And even might be a current problem that came from the past. Lock it and shut it. Now, I want you to put your eyes on the future and see what God has for you and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit and hear what He says. Because overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus. The overwhelming victory is ours. And He will give you peace and He will give you power as we pre- press in and persevere. Persevering is a powerful weapon against the the things that try to hold you back. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that your faith was filled and you were encouraged. If you have any prayer requests or want to connect with us further, search for us on our social media at Planet Shakers. We'd love to hear from you.